This short film will outline your responsibility as a manager and the minimum information and training you need to tell your staff. Fire can occur at any time and anywhere. If your staff are properly trained, then they should respond in the correct manner. If they have received fire extinguisher training, they could tackle the fire if it is safe to do so. If not, they should raise the alarm and then evacuate to the assembly point. They should then report to their supervisor what they saw, so this useful information can be passed to the fire service. When the fire alarm is raised, staff should know exactly what to do. Usually, most people will evacuate immediately to the assembly point, but some key staff, such as fire marshals, evacuation buddies, and the person who calls the fire service may have some quick tasks to perform before they leave. In some buildings or workplaces, there may be different types of evacuation systems. For example, in tall buildings, people may evacuate at different times using a two-stage alarm system. Another example, such as hospitals or care homes, may adopt horizontal evacuation methods or even stay-put policies. Staff must know what fire extinguishers are in their buildings and how they work. They should also know the different types of fires and what extinguishers are suitable for tackling them. This vital training should not be overlooked as recent statistics reveal that 80% of companies that occupy standalone premises will not reopen for business if they suffer a major fire. Your workplace should have established evacuation procedures and it's every employee's duty to be familiar with their role. You should also have procedures for outside normal working hours and procedures for extraordinary events that may occur in your business calendar. For example, there may be many people who are not familiar with your building at large conference or at a new product launch. Effective procedures for evacuating persons with disabilities is also a priority. The evacuation procedure should also inform you of the available assembly points. Assembly points are safe areas where members of staff or public will congregate so that a check can be made to ensure the premises has been evacuated. Assembly points should be located at a safe distance from the building, be large enough to cope with the expected numbers and be free from smoke or falling debris. They should be easily identified so that all staff and visitors know their location. Fire doors can provide valuable protection, but only if they are closed and properly maintained. Left open, they serve no purpose whatsoever. Fire service inspectors will tell you that fire doors wedged open always come at the top of the list of faults found during a typical inspection. So who calls the fire service? In all premises, it should be a nominated person. It could be the receptionist, in-house security, or any person you think is suitable, but that person must be trained. There should also be a deputy, in case that person is away from their desk or workstation. Also, do not forget to make arrangements for out of normal working hours, as the person who normally calls the fire service may not be working at that time. Fires can occur at any time, but the risk of outbreak is minimized, providing you follow some simple rules. It's important that you follow basic fire prevention advice and adopt good housekeeping practices. This will include shutting fire doors, keeping exits clear, and removing sources of ignition away from combustible materials. Experts agree that these measures, along with regular staff training, will reduce the risk of fire. Remember, there may be many other things you may need to tell your staff. This could include the findings of the fire risk assessment, how to shut down machinery, the reasons for not using lifts, etc. Your fire risk assessment should identify these training needs and the frequency of the training. If you'd like further information, then please contact the Fire Service Safety Partnership.